Hello, this is Mrs. Warren. I'm going to go over the practice review worksheet for section 4.4, the chain rule. So let's get started. Number one, I'm uh, raising 5x plus 2 to the second power. So I'm going to say that my u is what's inside, so that's going to be 5x plus 2. And then the derivative of u, because I like finding it at the same time, is just going to be 5. So when I'm going to rewrite y as u to the second power, when I take the derivative of y, I'm doing it in terms of u, and that's going to be 2u, and then the raise the first power, and then I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of u. Now I'm going to substitute back in my u's, and so I'm going to have 2 times 5x plus 2 times the derivative of this, which is 5. And when I finalize it, I'm going to have 10 times 5x plus 2 raised to the first power. Check to make sure nothing else can be typified and nothing else can. Moving on to the next one, I am going to say u is equal to x squared plus 5. So when I take the derivative of u, that's going to be 2x. Um, Rewrite y as y is equal to u to the one third power. Taking the derivative of y in terms of u, I'm going to have one third u. Reduce the one third by one, so one third minus one, which would be negative two thirds. And then I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of u. So this derivative, when I substitute what u back in, is going to be x squared plus five raised to negative two thirds power times the derivative, which we just have was 2x. So I'm going to have to identify my numerator and my denominator. Cannot leave any negative exponents, so this quantity has to go down in the denominator. The 2x is going to stay in the numerator. The 3, obviously, is in the denominator, so it's going to stay in the denominator. And that is my final answer, 2x over the quantity of 3 times x squared plus 5 raised to the 2 thirds power. Moving on to number three, I am going to say my innermost function is going to be my u, which is going to be negative x to the fifth plus two. When I take the derivative of u, that's going to be negative five x to the fourth. Remember, the derivative of a constant is zero, so that's why that two drops out. Y, I'm going to rewrite as u to the one third power. So when I take the derivative, I'm going to have one third u the negative two-thirds power times the derivative of u. So it's the same derivative in terms of u that we had for the last problem. So now I'm going to substitute back in my u's. just want to make sure I said the right thing. Uh, this will be negative x to the fifth plus two. I'm now raising that to the negative two-thirds power. And I'm going to multiply it by my derivative, which I said was negative 5x to the fourth. Again, can't have the negative exponent. So I'm going to have negative 5x to the fourth in the numerator, the 3, and then the negative x squared plus 2. That whole quantity raised to the 2 thirds power. And that is going to be my derivative. Nothing else can simplify. Moving on to number 4, I'm going to say my u is equal to 3x to the third plus 2. The derivative of u is going to be 9x squared. The derivative of 2 is 0. So y is equal to u to the negative 3 power. So when I take the derivative, I'm going to have negative 3u to re reduce the power by 1, so that would be negative 4, and I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of u. So now I'm going to have negative 3 u, I'll bring, the, bring this back in for u, so 3x u plus 2 to the negative 4 times the derivative of u, which I said was 9x squared. Now, remember that 3 is going to, this negative 3 is going to stay in the normal. So I'm going to have... Negative 3 times positive 9 will be negative 27x squared, all over 3x to the third plus 2, that whole quantity to the fourth power. And that is when we run derivative, nothing else can simplify, so I'm going to leave it like that. The next one I have uh, y is equal to 3x to the fourth. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Y is equal to 3x plus 4. So I'm going to say my u is equal to 3x plus 4. The derivative of u is going to be just 3. So when I rewrite this, this is going to be y is equal to u to the 1 third. Take the derivative. So y is 1 third u subtract 1 negative 2 thirds times the derivative of u. So I am going to have 1 third substituting my u back in, 3x plus 4 to the negative 2 thirds power times the derivative, which we just said was 3. Now when I multiply this 3 by this 1 third, that'll just be 1. So I'm going to have 1 in the numerator and then 3x plus 4 to the 2 thirds power in the denominator. Moving on to the next one, I'm going to say that my u is equal to negative 5x to the 4th minus 1. The derivative of u is going to be negative 20x to the 3rd. So now I'm going to rewrite y is equal to u to the 1 5th power. Taking the derivative of y in terms of u will be 1 5th u. Reduce this power by 1, so negative 4 fifths times the derivative of u. Substituting in my u back, I'm going to have 1 fifth times the quantity of negative 5 x to the 4th minus 1, raised to negative 4 fifths power, multiplied by the derivative of u, which I just said was negative 20 x to the 3rd. Now, you can simplify or you can just wait to simplify. Let's say I didn't simplify right away. And let's say I rewrote this and I did this negative 20x to the third goes in my numerator. It's 5 and this 1 fifth and negative 5x to the fourth minus 1 to the 4 fifths. I'm still going to have to simplify when I'm done because I need my fraction of those terms. So 5 will go into 5 once, 5 will go into 24 times. Remember, you cannot simplify anything yet from this point that's raised to a power. So then I'm going to have y is equal to negative 4x to the third, all over the quantity of negative 5x to the fourth minus 1. And this whole quantity is raised to the 4 fifths power. Okay, those are the first six. Let's keep on going. So number seven, I'm doing the chain rule. I have to ask myself, what is the outermost function? Well, the outermost function is this being raised to the third power. So I'm going to say that y is going to equal u to the third power. So if I write it like that first, then I know that this is what my u has to be. It has to be this entire fraction. So I'm going to write this entire fraction as what my u is. And now I've got to take the derivative of u, which means I'm going to have to do the quotient rule when I take the derivative of u. So when I take the quotient rule, I'm leaving the denominator alone. I'm going to try and be neat. And I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of the numerator, which is going to be 5 times 3, so 15x to the 4th. The derivative of 4 is 0, so it's just going to be 15x to the 4th. Minus, now I'm leaving my numerator alone. And I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of my denominator, so I'm going to take 3 times 4 and get 12. Reduce that power by 1, and that's squared. The derivative of this 3... And it look like a 3 is going to be 0. And this is going to be all over my denominator, which is 4x to the third plus 3, and I square it. Now, I'm going to do myself a favor, and I am going to clean up my derivative as much as I can, including factoring out. So that way, I it'll make it easier when I go to substitute it back in. So when I do my derivative, when I, when I do this, I'm going to multiply the 15. I'm going to distribute, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to have 60 x to the 7th plus 45x to the 4th. Now I'm going to distribute this negative sign at the same time I'm distributing this 12. We have negative 36x to the 7th minus 48x squared. All over that denominator of 4x to the 3rd plus 3 squared. So I do have like terms. I have the 60x to the 7th and the negative 36 x to the 7. So when I combine those two, I believe I get 24 x to the 7. Then I have no other like terms. So plus 45 x to the 4th 
minus 48x squared all over my denominator 4x to the third plus 3 squared. And again, I want to factor out what I can so this is nice and tidy. So when I do this, I look at 24, 45, and 48, and I decide that I can factor out 3. I can factor out 3. So that will be 8. Oh, I can factor out an x, too. Let's do that all at once. So I'm going to factor out an x squared because that's my lowest power. So I'm going to have 8x to the fifth plus 15x squared minus 3, 16. And this is all over 4x to the third plus 3 squared. And I think that's as simplified as I can get it, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So going back up here, the derivative of something raised to the third power is going to be 3 times u squared and then multiply by the derivative of u. So I'm going to substitute my u's back in. So this will be 3. And then my u is going to be this quantity of 3x to the fifth plus 4 over 4x to the third plus 3. This whole thing raised to the second power times the derivative of u, which is that. Hmm, I'm going to run out of room. Pause, please. Thank you, pause you. Now I make room for myself. So now I'm going to multiply by the derivative of u, which is this stuff here. So I'm going to write 3x squared times that. So now I'm going to go to clean this up. Who wouldn't want to clean it up? So when I do this, this 3 is in the numerator. So when I take this 3 times this 3x squared, I'm going to get 9x squared in the numerator. Then both of these are squared, so I can think of it like this. So I'm going to have 3x to the fifth plus 4 squared. I already took care of this 3x squared when I made it to 9x squared. And then 8x to the fifth. And then my denominator is going to be this quantity of 4x cubed plus 3. Here it's squared, here it's squared. So total I have raised to the fourth power. And that is going to be the derivative of that using the chain. Okay, the next one is going to be doing the ch uh, chain rule, but I'm going to have to do the product rule while I do the chain rule. So I have this raised to the second power. So I'm going to say u is equal to 3x squared plus 5. And the derivative of u is going to be 6x. So when I do the chain rule, and I'm going to leave u in here first. I think, yes, I am. So I'm going to say y is equal to u squared times this 5x to the fourth plus 2. So I just replaced this u with this. Now when I go to do the, the product row, I'm going to leave u squared alone, multiplied by the derivative of 5x to the fourth. And when I do that, I'm going to get 20x to the third, and the derivative of 2 is 0. This will be a plus sign. And the derivative of u squared will be 2u to the first power times the derivative of u. And then I'm going to multiply it by that 5x to the fourth plus 2 that I'm going to leave alone. So now when I write this, putting my u back in, my u was at 3x squared plus 5. So this u will be 3x squared plus 5 squared times 20x to the third plus 2 times my u, which is 3x squared plus 5, times the derivative of u, which is 6x, times 
times that 5x to the fourth plus 2. Oh, let's clean up. So I like my monomials in the front, so I'm going to put 20x to the third in front of this 3x squared plus 5. It doesn't really matter, I just think it looks neater. And I'm going to multiply my monomials here, so 2 times 6x will give me 12x. And I have 3x squared plus 5, and then 5x to the fourth plus 2. Then I notice I'm going to factor out what I can so I can simplify. So between the 20 and the 12, I can factor out a 4. And between the... So I can factor out a 4. Between the x to the 3rd and x, I can factor out an x. Then both of them have this quantity of 3x squared plus 5. One is squared, one is the first, so the lowest power is the first, so that's what I'm going to factor out. I don't think I can factor out anything else, so I'm going to put a bracket now. And then I'm going to ask myself, what do I have to multiply 4 by to get 20, and that would be 5? What do I have to multiply x by to get x cubed, and that would be x squared? This I factored out to the first power, but this was raised to the second power, so I'm going to have 1 still left here. One to the first power to the left. Then I've taken care of the first term. Now I'm going to look at the second term. I have this plus sign. I have to multiply 4 by 3 to get that 12. The x is already taken care of. This 3x plus 5 I've already factored out. And now I'm left with 5x to the fourth plus 2. And I'm going to close my bracket. I'm going to... Um, Combine like terms and simplify. So I'm going to have 4x here, 3x squared plus 5. Now I'm going to distribute. So I'm going to have 15x to the fourth plus 25x squared. And then this will be plus 15x to the fourth plus 6. Combining like, like terms. Fifteen plus fifteen will give me thirty x to the fourth. It's twenty-five x squared plus six. And I can check to see if the product sums, and it does not, so I am done. So that's the derivative of that one using the chain rule within the product rule. Okay, and the last one gives me one of those tables. So um, part one says, given that h of one is equal to f. The, the function of x squared, find the derivative of h at 2. So you'd have to think of it as you're going to do you're going to take the it'll be the derivative of something raised to the second power. So 2 times f of x times the derivative of x of f of x is the way I'm thinking of it. So when I do this, I should put the twos in, but I didn't, so I can put the twos in. And when I do this, I'm going to have 2, and then f of 2, f of 2 is 4, and then the derivative of 2 is 1 half, and when I multiply this all together, I get 4. And then the next one, I am going to do f of g of x. Okay, the next one, part 2, says given h sub 2 of x is equal to f of g of x, find the derivative of this function at 1. So since you're doing f of g of x, it's kind of like you're going to take the derivative of the outermost function. So the derivative of the outermost function times the derivative of the innermost function. So when I do that, f of 1, the derivative of f of 1 is going to be 2, and then the derivative of g at 1 is going to be 1. So I'm going to have 2 times 1, which is 2. All right, I hope this video helps, and I will see you next time in class.